Hey folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for joining us on the Fat Burning Man Show, where we talk about real food and real results. Have you ever tried having too much stevia at once? It's disgusting. You want to spit it out. And there's growing research that says that sugar substitutes can actually mess with our brain and taste buds, especially if we abuse them and we have too much. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of sweetness here and there from stevia, monk fruit, or real food sweeteners, as we'll talk about on this show. But you've got to know what you're doing when you're dealing with the sweet. So to help us navigate this thorny world of home cookery and health, we're here with our friend Anna Vicino, a voiceover talent and stand-up comic who also writes cookbooks and co-hosts the Fitness Confidential Podcast. Before we get there, here's a review that just came in for the podcast. This is from Alec, and he says, Game Changer. I have been listening to this podcast for years, and it led me to lose 100 pounds when I first got into this lifestyle. I have fluctuated a bit since then, but listening to the awesome guests and Abel's guidance keeps me focused and helps me get back into the right mindset. This information also led me to try and do my part to help by starting my own business in edible landscaping where I help others grow healthy food so they can achieve what I have. All of this came with the information I learned here on the Fat Burning Man Show. Thank you, Abel. Signed, Alec2386. Oh, man, Alec, this has so much of my favorite things in it. <laughs> First of all, I, we've never met. You've lost over 100 pounds. That's incredible. If you ever need uh, a hand or have any questions, you probably know this better than I do. But please um, write me again. Get in touch. But also, you mentioned that you started your own business, another cool thing. And not only that, it's an edible landscaping. I couldn't think of like a cooler business to get into than that, where you're growing edibles, especially that work with a natural environment and feeding yourself, getting confidence, improving your food security, learning about how nature works all at the same time. This is the best ever. Thank you so much, Alec, for writing in. And if you want to get in touch, best way to do it is just send me an email at able at fatburningman.com. But do go to fatburningman.com and sign up for the newsletter as well, because we have all sorts of goodies that will be coming your way. Now, if you'd like to try the wild diet yourself, you can download our 30-day fat loss program on the device that you're listening to this on right now, and you can get the best meal plans that we've ever put together. In these plans, we share 30 days of foodie-friendly meals that are designed to help you drop fat with real food. So if you're ready to upgrade your nutrition, get our 30-day program for a limited-time discount at fatburningman.com 30 days. Just go to that URL bar and type in fatburningman.com 30 days. You can also go to fatburningman.com, check out our store. Every purchase from there directly supports us and this show. You help us keep the lights on and we always appreciate it. You can also grab my brand new book of silly poetry called Designer Babies Still Get Scabies. That's over at designerbabiesbook.com. And really good news about that. It's now a number one international bestseller in seven countries, including a number one bestseller in poetry in the UK, in the US, Canada, in Australia, and a number one bestseller in humor in France, Germany, and even Japan. So I guess the international folks have a better sense of humor than Americans right now. Here are a couple of quick reviews. This one's from Ben. He says, witty and thoughtful, funny while making light of real issues, humorous and entertaining. Will says, I love this book of insightful poetry. I'm going to get another one as a gift. Penn says, you owe it to yourself to get this one. Great book, both poignant and funny. All done in rhymes. Great social commentary. And here's good news. When you pick up your copy at designerbabiesbook.com and you get the paperback version, the physical copy, then I send you a free copy of the audiobook. And I put a lot of time and energy and effort into doing the audiobook myself. So go check out Designer Babies, Still Get Scabies, over on Amazon, Audible, but certainly at designerbabiesbook.com. I hope you enjoy it. All right, on to the show with Anna Vicino. You're about to hear why artificial and natural sweeteners are a double-edged sword, how to ditch dirty keto and train your taste buds, why you should try an elimination diet, how Anna negotiated intermittent fasting with a history of anorexia, why comedy is healing for our relationships, and a whole lot more. Let's go hang out with Anna. 
Folks, the wonderful Anna Vaccino returns to the show today with a brand spanking new book, Eat Happy Too. Anna, of course, co-hosts the Fitness Confidential podcast with friend of the show, Vinny Tortorich, and she's also a voiceover talent and stand-up comic. Her cookbook and Amazon bestsellers, Eat Happy and Eat Happy Too, have 320 plus easy to make low carb recipes that are all delicious comfort food, free of sugars, most sugars and grains. Anna hails from Los Angeles and cooks for a husband, a teenage daughter and a tiny little dog. Anna, thank you so much for joining us on the thank show. Thank you for having me. It's been a long time. Nice to see you. I know. It's, it's always a blast to catch up. And... <laughs> A lot has happened, but a lot has firstly, happened. You know, I I was reading and I'd forgotten this that you've been celiac and gluten free since yeah. 2002. Yeah, back we're, way before it was trendy or cool. Yeah, not that we're coming up. Not on that like, being gluten free has ever been trendy or cool, but it's certainly been a thing in our cultural zeitgeist. It's been called a lot of different things, though. It has it? been. <laughs> it's been it's been interesting seeing what's happened with the internet, especially as paid advertising has kind yes. of like kicked up in the fast past few years you see how some words just out of nowhere keto carnivore um all vegan the keywords too, and just at certain times in yeah. certain ways are everywhere you um, see them everywhere you don't see paleo as much anymore but now you see keto and then i'm sure yeah. it'll, it'll be something else in about a year from now something else will really kick in because i feel like keto's now coming down it's it's coming down the backlash mountain you know that's right it's starting what? to get slapped around a bit <laughs> it's it's interesting because it has kind of been around for a very long time, it has. but seeing it balloon out and now you're right, it is getting that backlash. It's, it's getting actual, you know, scientists and a lot of faces who seem to have a lot of credibility behind them coming yeah. up but at the same time. It's just getting torn down and then you have carnivore trying to gobble up. Paleo Carn but maybe carnivore is the, the next time. thing. Yeah. It is interesting to watch. Um, it, it's tough out there. For, yeah. for any person who's trying to gather the data and figure out what should I eat, you know? And so to me, it's always just made sense to cut out the processed sugars and grains. So when Vinny taught me about NSNG, no sugars, no grains, it made yeah. sense. And yes, that is a different, like if, if you have a paintbrush of low carb, keto, NSNG, paleo, it's all very similar. However, to me, it's like the baseline of how I handle the, the autoimmune that I deal with is cutting out the sugars and grains. I also have to not do dairy. Mm -hmm. and um, But then everything else is customizable. So I personally don't do dairy. You could do dairy maybe. Good for you. I have options for that in the cookbooks. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that like, it's if you want to be plant-based, you could be plant-based, but you probably will find out that you eventually have to cut out processed sugars and grains. If you right. want to be carnivore, you definitely have to cut out processed sugars and grains. So it just, mm -hmm. it, to me, it just made the most sense as a baseline where it was like the least amount of, of conflicting news stories telling me, eat an egg, don't eat an egg, eat an yeah. egg, eat it. you know, that thing that it makes us all crazy, the latest headline. Does it still make you crazy or did you kind of like solidify your stance years ago and now you feel pretty cool about it? It doesn't make me crazy anymore because I see those headlines and I'm like, ooh, that's fodder for Vinny and I to talk about on the podcast. <laughs> sure. So I'm okay with it. Yeah. Uh, when it makes me crazy, and, and, and you just have to remember back to when before you started doing any self-help N equals one nutritional experimentation that uh, people are coming to this information. They're coming in droves. People are sick. People are metabolically damaged. People want help. And they, they have a million questions and you have to go, oh, wait, eight, 10 years ago, I had those same questions or I had the same biases. Oh yeah, I tried Atkins in the nineties and it was just me sitting in the Publix parking lot eating uh, sugar-free Jello in the car crying because I was like, oh, what carbs? <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like that was my association when I was 23 years old doing Atkins in the nineties, you know? Right. But now it's called keto. But now it's called keto and it's, it's the exact same thing. However... I also, that's another thing that I've modified is I, I personally, I have such a strong distaste for the artificial sweeteners and sugar substitutes. I was just listening to your new name for monk fruit. What was that again? Butt sugar? Butt sugar. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's what, okay. So I forget what I say on the podcast most of the time and a yeah. bunch of people tweeted me about butt sugar. And I was like, what is, what, did I say that? <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. 
Now you, you just put a whole, that. you just crystallize a lot of stuff. And I'm like, oh, it's too much. I'm too old to remember all these things. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. But anyway, the point is, and, yeah. and I share it with you, you need to be, we can and sometimes do use monk fruit stevia. Sure. Erythritol. And that's fine. You can do that. We've tried pretty much all of them, but Me too. they're all a double-edged sword. They are. And very For easy to use. There's no free lunch either with sweetness. So I, I would love for you to just, I know you yes. forgot everything you said on the podcast, but I love <laughs> what, what it was. So what's your take on art? Well, natural artificial sweeteners, well, right? I, the, I the believe, ones that you're allowed I, to have kind of. Yeah. But. I believe it's called now it has a term that I've seen thrown around called dirty keto, okay. um, which is basically you're kind of substituting everything you ate in the standard American diet with a acceptable keto substitute that won't spike your blood sugar. So right. that means uh, you make a pizza crust with pork rinds and cheese and, you know, or you uh, make a dessert, a cheesecake, but it has erythritol or some sort of sugar substitute or, or, or artificial sweetener mm -hmm. or Splenda. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you're not really training your taste buds to get off of the sugar. I cannot speak to the science of whether that stuff actually spikes your blood sugar. I'm not a scientist. I am a taste expert, <laughs> meaning like literally my palate. I have a good palate, and to me, that stuff tastes crazy. So I don't like yeah. to use it. Yep. I would rather, and, and also I'm coming from a background of a former anorexic, from being on a diet for so many years, that I would rather change my body chemistry through eating more fat, eating less processed sugars and grains, change my hormonal balance in my body. And then when it's my birthday or a special occasion, or it's my husband's birthday or whatever, I will make something that has the least amount of real sugar possible. Mm -hmm. It's still sugar though. Yes. It's going to spike my blood sugar. Yes. It will kick me out of ketosis. I am okay with that. And then I get right back on the train because I feel like to me, it's a more sensible approach. Now, that being said, you're an adult. You can eat whatever the F you want to eat. I don't yeah. care. I don't judge you. I don't, if you like butt sugar, get after it. I don't yeah. care. I really don't. And um, to me, it just tastes like stevia tastes like sugar brewed through like filthy, dirty gym socks. Like I don't, I'm not into that. <laughs> and yeah, I tried for, me, for years. It gives me like a zing of, it's not sweetness exactly. It's like a, so sweet that it makes me numb. Right. I remember like the first time I tried it in coffee years ago, I was just yeah. like, bah, and spit it, just like spit it right out. Do you remember when Stevia came in a little thing of like powder and it had like a little like cocaine spoon in it and you yeah. felt like a drug dealer? Like you're like, right. just, and you could put in like a quarter of that, like a little, like a pinhead it's amount. It's a chemical process. That's what it is. If you're going to be cooking with that stuff or using it at all, you need to know exactly what yeah. the right dilution ratio is and every I'm single sure, thing is different. And I'm sure a lot of people have thrown a lot of things in the trash because they're like, wait a minute, that tastes weird. <laughs> Yeah. And I get it. I get it. However, I, I, I want to come at it at a more holistic approach. And that's why there's no nutritional information in the book because mm -hmm. it's just, it's food. Yeah. That's and, how we do it too. And as a former dieter and expert at counting fat grams, carb grams, macros, micros, mm -hmm. calories, you know, in your head, oh, that's, I know the Weight Watchers points of all the things, like, you know, because it's yeah. so ingrained in us. And I want people to be free of that and feel like, oh, I can start to trust my body and I can focus my energy on other things in my life. Right. It's worth saying though that that is, I've realized, a skill, right? You you buy kind of, you built that skill the wrong way by being yeah. anorexic. It is right? a skill, right, exactly. But it, but it is a skill where you can't just like, all of a sudden go into this and eat intuitively. That's not exactly how it works, no, right? So we have to process. be clear in terms of like, you do have to learn how this works that, that, that there are macros, that different weights that of food exist. mean different yes. things, there are different amounts of water. And you also need to, I think if you're going to have your health for the rest of your life, learn how to freaking cook, get in the <laughs> kitchen, take real food. I want to get every American into the kitchen. That's, yeah. that's my goal. And, we're and losing our, them. Our kitchens are hemorrhaging them. right now. Well, listen, I, I did a, a, a book signing in San Diego on Saturday and so many people came up to me and said, I literally had never set foot in a kitchen. I bought your books and they taught me how to cook. So now I can watch. No the, I know. And that's what I go. I've done my job. Yeah. You know what I mean? And all, and all you had to do was buy a couple cookbooks. Great. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's a pretty sound financial investment. And, and so now people are telling me all the time they can watch like a, a food network show or they can watch a, uh, 
uh, look at a, a video, uh, a, what's it called, a recipe online mm -hmm. and adapt it to take the stuff out. And I'm like, great, I've done, I've done my work. That's all, that's all I want because I get it. I'm, I'm a home cook. I'm a mom. I got to like make stuff quickly. We have to make dinner. And, and people, remember back in the 90s when people were like, I, I don't have time to exercise. And everyone was like, you don't have time to not exercise. Right, right. Like, I feel like the cooking home cooked meals is the new, like, I don't have time to do that. And then you're like, you don't have time to not do that. Like that's you, you, you have to make it a thing. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because we have busy schedules. Everybody has busy lives. Everybody has to get up early in the morning and prepare. And by the way, if you're, you're the parents of small children who are also picky eaters and you're making like five different meals for five different people in your house, you're going to go crazy. Mm. But you can figure out how to streamline it. Oh, and I wanted to say an asterisk to the counting thing. Yeah. If you're like a woman just wrote me yesterday on Instagram and she said her four-year-old was just diagnosed with type one diabetes and then subsequently celiac disease, which, oh my which oftentimes they can go hand in hand. And, um, and I understand the need to count when it's medically necessary. Right. I don't, Absolutely. I'm not trying to poo poo sure. the counting for that, but for the, for most of us who are just, you know, getting a hold of it all. Once you kind of get the education and you get it locked in, you can do that. Uh, also too, people have told me that all of my, someone's input, all of my recipes into my fitness pal. So you could literally type in nice. Anna Vicino, you know, Asian beef tacos and it'll come up. So if yeah. you really need to count, it's there. Yeah. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's interesting. I go back and forth, you know, same thing with like the self quantification and, and looking at my sleep and recovery and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, I go years and I'm just like, I hate this. I don't want anything to do with measuring, right. counting and all this. I just want to live and do what I want to do. And then other times I'm like, I really want to dial this in and make sure I'm tracking every and little thing. Totally and what's missing with my sleep this night and that night. And uh, I think there's something to be said to just kind of following your energy and, and going with what you naturally want to do. And you're going to be watching that pendulum swing back and forth sometimes. Absolutely. And that's okay. Right. I, if, I think if, that's okay. if it feels good to do it, then do it. If it feels bad to do it, then don't do it. Yeah. There's, there's another, there's another solution that you will align with. I, I found that we, we're very intuitive and we don't even know it, mm -hmm. you know? So if there's something going on, like you had a major thing going on. So the fact that you needed to dial some stuff in and get like really buckled down, that's, benefiting you and you need to follow yeah. that like impulse you know and, and if 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 it's just like you're using it as an excuse to beat yourself up or mm -hmm. that you're not good enough or that you're not thin enough yet or oh my gosh because I right now it's February that we're recording this I don't know when it's going to come out but right now is about the time when most people did their new year's resolution and they have either disappeared completely or they're really doubling down and yeah. like they love it you know what I mean? So it's like we're at the 30 day ish, 40 day ish mark and people will do that. And I'm like, you have to use it to your benefit mm -hmm. and you're an adult. You get to make that choice. Nobody tells you what to do. Nobody, nobody. It's it's get to choose. They want you to, t they want you to think that they have to tell you what to do. So you continue yeah. to buy the next product and the next potion and the next powder, the next thing. And, and, and I will tell you too, like, of course I want you to buy my cookbooks. I, I, want you to buy them. I've put out, you know, my 10,000 hours of free content. I hope that folks buy the cookbook, but you don't have to. You can go to my site and get recipes for free. You can Google, get re here's a bajillion recipes, but you get to choose. Yeah. That's another good point though, too, because we are, <laughs> we've been doing this a while now, like kind of all yeah. of us in our little community. Right. I feel like exactly. we're part of the same class in some ways coming yes, up exactly. time or whatever with podcasts. I graduated especially. in 2012. <laughs> <laughs> when I started my podcast in the real world. Well, yeah. you have your advanced degree. I'm still an undergrad or something like that. But we'll, we'll, that's, that's enough with that metaphor. But right. anyway, for people who are, you know, kind of like the listeners and the members on our, of our community who might not be behind the mic, um, I think it is really important that we all just try to figure out one way that we can keep this going. Right. In, in a way that, that maybe is is free of meeting up in physical space, right? Because that's right. that's the ideal, especially for building tribes and all of that. Right, right, but right. Mostly, a lot of this have a lot of us have been doing similar things for a long time, but now it has so many different names, and, and no one's doing it exactly the same way. Sure. And so, because of that, many people feel alone or give up because they feel like 
they don't have like enough momentum and inertia around them kind sure. of all doing the same thing. Or they're they surrounded by family in. members in their physical space who don't support right. the changes they're trying to make, which is always really tricky. We hear a lot about that. Oh, we've had now, we've been doing this so long. We've had people, uh, you know, get divorced because one person loses oh, the sure. weight. Yeah. And then they get remarried and they, you know what I mean? And they have a new, whole yeah. new family. Like it's been so long that we've seen <laughs> People have gotten tattoos where I'm like, what are you doing? You know, it's like, oh, yeah, like NSNG tattoos and eat happy. Ta I kid you not. And like stuff it's like cool. that. People have met and gotten married, uh, you know, in our Facebook groups and stuff. And I, and I love watching it. But yeah, I that's why I will always be on the mic saying, don't go away. Stay yeah. here. Even if this isn't the solution for you, don't lose hope or faith because I have been there. I've tried all of the diets. Mm -hmm they don't work. And, you know, it's like, and I'm talking about diet diets, like where you're, yeah. you know, depriving yourself of stuff. Um, they don't work. And, and the mental games that you're going to go through and all the belief systems that you have to peel back, it's a process. People feel like, oh, well, I, ha I had my Super Bowl meal. And so I guess now it's going to be another month of eating like dog s mm -hmm. and like, I don't know if I can cuss. And then, so they, they, and I say, no, 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 just on Monday, just start again. It's okay. It's a process. Yeah. Just start again. That's what everybody else does. Who's doing this successfully. They just pick themselves back up instead of going, well, I, I guess they, you know, you, that self-talk where you're so hateful to yourself because you let yourself have chips and dip at a Super Bowl party. And it's like, yeah. no, please, I'm begging you. Yeah. Come out well, the other side of that. <laughs> and it's so interesting, but whatever you do in February, that's not going to, really matter over the course of your life. It's what you do over the course That's of your true. life when you're not That's really true. paying attention. It, it's not what you do during one Super Bowl party or not. But I got to say, the Super Bowl did just happen recently. And there have been so re recently, I've been engaging haters. Some people Ooh, say really awful things. That. Yeah, but, tell me about that. But I've been and a lot of them were carnivores because I made fun of the carnivore diet a bunch. It's just being the kitty food diet. Because it's <laughs> if you're doing it right, especially you're eating kitty food, you're eating organ meats, kidneys, and nose to tail right. and, and all of that. Are you that. saying kitty and, like cat food? Yeah, like cat food. Okay, okay, okay. Not like kitty, like children food. No, kitty. no, no. That's right. Kitty, kitty cat food. English, okay, once got again. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so a bunch of people were just kind of like coming after me for the, the diehard right. carnivores are coming after me for calling it cat food and, and just kind of making fun of it a bit and I can't remember exactly what some people said but there there's been a lot of hate so it all kind of blends together sure sure but a really fascinating thing happened when when I actually replied to like what they were saying um they replied back followed for the most part and this has happened right. like multiple times oh yeah they, they wanted to be listened to follow me back and now we're like friends and they like tweet at me and just That's like great. I love it. Me and, and stuff like That's that. Great. But like during the Super Bowl, so because we follow each other now and I'm, I'm just like following some of these carnivores, I'm looking at like what they're making for their Super Bowl meals. What are and they it's making? just like steaks. And like, there's another <laughs> yeah. one that's just like- look Steak at with a side of sausage. A little bit of cheese on top. And it's just like, this is so good. I'm doing it again. And then there's, there's some ribs and then there's some hot dogs. And I'm just yeah. like, oh man, I am so glad that I eat plants. That-, that Plants I are personally a big love plants. And I, I spoke to a, a lady this weekend at the at the San Diego book signing, and she said she's been carnivore since October, and it's really helped her. She uh, she cured like some periodontal stuff that she had, and it's cured wow. some other stuff. And I'm like, that's awesome. And uh, and I brought we the fun thing about when I do book signings is that I try to get people to bring dishes from the book, and I brought you know, corned beef brisket <laughs> with awesome. cabbage for the. I know, and Barnes and Noble will let me set up, and we wow. generally have like a potluck, which is really fun. And I hope nobody's poisoning their food and bringing it. I hope no haters show up with. Right. But I, I trust that people have, are good at heart and want to bring yummy things. Yeah. Um, but no, I brought a corn corned beef brisket in the slow cooker with the cabbage in it and and uh Oh, that sounds so good. Which is on my website, by the way. I leave that up because I want all, all the St. Patrick's Day people to have a, a low carb option yeah. to go with their green beer. Hard to um, do. Yeah. So but it, she said I so I said, You won't even have the cabbage. She goes, Nope. I just have the meat. And I was like, whoa, like I can still, I'm still wrapping my brain around the whole carnivore thing. 
Yeah. Well, okay. So I don't want to just like throw anyone under the bus. I think anything no. can be good or bad. Yeah. And the point is though, is that especially on the internet, everything becomes a meme of itself and just turns into a tiny totally. little reductionist cartoon and it doesn't even make sense totally. anymore. But like, from what I understand, if you're doing it right, carnivore is an elimination diet of, excuse me, an el an elimination, oh my God, oh my God. elimination <laughs> diet of a temptation diet. Yes. And there are a lot of things in plants that are good for us and a lot of things in plants that are bad for us. Sure. Yep. That goes with meat too, though. So I think if you're going to go carnivore, then you might as well try other elimination diets and see just where that line is for you. Because that line yep. will always move uh, if you're training, if you're a woman or a man or anything in between, if you're old or you're young or whatever. Everybody's it's always going to gonna be changing. We got to do this differently. And mm -hmm. we, we, I think the longer we do that, the, the more likely we all are to kind of meet more in the middle. I, I did a challenge a couple, I like doing challenges. That's yeah, how I kind of dial it in. So I did a 75 day challenge because everybody was doing the 75 hard. And so I did my own version of it, which was 75 days with not a, not a cheat sip of alcohol, no sip of alcohol, no bite of dairy, not even a cheat. Cause dairy's one where I'm not supposed to have it, but that's one where I'll cheat. And then I get really sick and then I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and no cheat bites of carbs. So nothing for 75 days. And I took my blood work at the beginning and my blood work at the end. And my, my inflammation markers went down so much. It was just, it was kind of like, a, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You see, I get it. <laughs> so now you can be more intuitive based upon that dialing. Based upon that, knowing right. that like, okay, if we push this too far, it's going to be. So I did one a few years ago where I did a, a, a raw, it was mostly raw. But it was definitely uh, just plant based, but no no grains, no sugars. So it was just fruit and vegetables, and a little bit of avocado and, and olive oil, but barely any. It was supposed to be a low fat, low protein for okay. three weeks. I did this, wow. and and the theory was that I was trying to test. And again, this is a theory within myself. This doesn't apply to anybody else but me. So right. I'm not like making this recommendation yeah. at all. <laughs> um, I wanted to see, you know, what kind of effect that would have on me. So I did, I did the blood work at the beginning. And what I did uh, was there's a certain amount of Epstein-Barr in my system, old antibodies. And because there's a lot of theories that sometimes Epstein-Barr and viruses kind of kick in. And so I had mono when I was 23. And that's kind of when the celiac symptoms started. And then I was diagnosed mm. at 28. So I just wanted to kind of test it out and see like what's going on. And <clears throat> I tested the Epstein-Barr antibodies in my system and they were just all old antibodies running through the system before I did the thing. And then about a week into doing this, I was so incredibly sick. It felt like the flu. I had had influenza B in the past and I thought, oh my God. And then I was like, I wonder if there's sometimes, okay, so I went to get the, the blood work two weeks into the three week experiment yeah. and the blood work said it was active Epstein-Barr like off the charts. So for whatever wow. reason, when I took out the, the, the protein and the animal products, mm -hmm. it made the Epstein bar get really active. And I don't know, I have no wow. idea why yeah. that happened. And I said, I never want to do that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not for me. However, I will say that I, I was like, what, what else is going on? So I like trying these different experiments and seeing, and, and, and by the way, if anybody, because I remember people used to make fun of Epstein-Barr and chronic fatigue syndrome. And I'm like, oh, it's, yeah. it's real. And it also yeah, made me wonder, are there times in the past when I've had the flu, but it's really been an Epstein-Barr flare up and I didn't realize that because sure. it felt exactly the same and it was right. awful. Wow. Or Lyme. Yeah, where I'm from, or Lyme. my brothers get Lyme, my parents multiple times. I've had. So if you get Lyme, Lyme, does it flare? It can flare. It's basically, is it like a lifelong, you have to just manage it? Is that what Lyme, is that... Um, I don't know anything what about. I understand and, and from the people around me who have had it. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things that can flare up kind of whenever and, and viral infections can be like that, right? Yeah. It's just, you kind of have this now and you're going to have to deal with that and hope that you never get low on sleep or too stressed out, right? Or eat the wrong thing or whatever. How, Cause then you're just going to, how is that ever going to happen? We're all yeah. low on sleep. We're all stressed out. Yeah. We're so, all like, Oh, I'm too tired. And you eat the wrong thing. Right. So I think we're, we're all damaged. You have to realize that there is some sort of margin that you can play with. But for the most yeah. part, with your habits 
that's where you have to be really careful. You have to set up the right ones. True. You got to get in the kitchen. You have to learn how to shop for clean foods or, or get some way of, of making sure right. they get close to your physical body. That can be really difficult sometimes when you're traveling. Absolutely. Uh, when you're oh, on the air, road, it can be really hard like, to eat clean or cook, but yeah. you can do it most of the time. You don't have to do it yeah. all the time, but you can do it most of the time. Well, you know what? I'm glad I've experimented with fasting over the years because traveling is the time that I'll choose to fast. Absolutely. Because if you're, you know, it's, it's, it's good. <laughs> I, I actually was very afraid of fasting at first because of the, the history with anorexia. I was like, yeah, oh, I, I, I can stop eating. <laughs> like I have right. that memory bank from being 16 to 18 and just not eating. Yeah. And so it was, a, it was a learning curve for me to figure out how to fast but we're not doing it as a way to try to have power or control over our lives. We're doing huh. it as a healthy choice. You know what That's I mean? We're doing it. Would it, you it, mind yeah. getting into that? How, sure. how you thought that through? Cause I didn't go through that same experience with fasting. Obviously. Yeah. You know, it's, well, it's funny because it's cert, fasting is certainly easier when you are low carb and you're uh, in dietary ketosis as opposed to being running on glucose or glycogen or whatever. I see, I don't even know the science terms. So don't yes. listen to me say science. Most of the scientists don't know what they're talking about <laughs> <Okay>. either. <laughs> oh my God. I called it autophagy forever. And the, every doctor here <laughs> was like, it's autophagy. I'm like, yeah, autophagy. Okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, wait, what? Are we talking about it's trying to learn fasting? Trying to learn the, the so, muscle Okay, so for you with your history of yes. not eating, that's a right. very slippery slope and one yes. that I'm not really able to talk about because that's, you know, I never really had a perfect way of eating, but I don't think I ever had an eating disorder either, but a lot of people who have right. struggled with, with fasting. So I just love for you to talk a little bit more about how you've thought this through and maybe yeah. what someone who's listening who might have that history could do so to for either me, do it or not do it. It was when I was a teenager and I was a dancer since I was four years old. So you know, this, the stereotype that dancers sometimes have a problematic relationship with food, I found to be very true. It was true in my life. It was true in many of my dancers, dancer friends' lives. And I, uh, you know, also too, that was in the 80s and 90s where we were all doing low fat and, and low calorie. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> it was a combination of having that background already being thin and wanting to push it even more because you want to, you know, look as lithe and beautiful as possible doing your arabesques and then hitting teenagehood and actually growing hips and uh, butt and boobs and things that you do as a woman, um, which basically meant I was not destined to be a dancer because I grew a very curvy body sure. and or at least curvy for a dancer. And so I, and then combined that background that I had with the, the teenage hood thing of, I don't know how, who I am, how I fit in, how I'm accepted. I, you know, I was at a place where I didn't felt like I really belonged, even though I liked being there. And so I found that if I could control what I ate, I felt like I was controlling my emotions and mm. I could prove to myself that I could do something because everything else in real life felt out of control, which by the way, that's just real life. <laughs> right. <laughs> <a false laughs> Welcome. Of, you know what I mean? It's a false sense of control. And sure. I know that now, but I didn't know that as a teenager. So anyway, been to therapy, worked through all that stuff. Everything's fine. And, uh, and, but when we had Jason Fung on the podcast and I was reading his book and I was like, this is very interesting. I like the idea of having these windows of when you eat. And this is just experimenting with intermittent fasting. This is long before yeah. I ever did like a four day fast or I've done many 48 hour fasts. I really like them. Okay. Um, but you know, when I was just experimenting with like, Hey, don't eat for 14 hours. That felt insane to me. Yeah. That felt crazy. Right. And so when I was doing it, I had, like if you had a hunger pang, it scared me because I was like, oh, we're, the hunger pang reminded me of when I used to starve myself. Hmm. And so I was afraid of it. And we actually, I had the luxury of being able to have Jason Fung on my podcast and talk yeah. to him and be like, because I always make it about me whenever, <laughs> when I'm, whenever I have an expert on. Sure. And I was like, well, what about hunger pangs? He goes, well, generally, if you take a glass of water, it, they'll pass. And yeah. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> 
I was like turning it into this thing. And then I realized, oh, it's still that belief system that I'm peeling back and that you're, you're always yeah. healing your beliefs surrounding food and how much we have tied up in like, this food means comfort. This food means I'm hiding who I really am. This food means I'm squelching anger. This food means I'm really sad. Mm -hmm. this, you know what I mean? And like, uh, and this food means I'm happy. So why shouldn't I be able to have it? It's a happy thing. And it's just a constant, like getting in touch with what you're actually doing and realizing, oh, you're eating because of emotions, but you're also not eating because of emotions and instead yeah. going, oh no, we're just doing this for health reasons. And then all of a sudden it cleared up wow. and, it, and, it, and it was like, oh, you can do this. And don't get me wrong. It's not easy. A four day, yeah. I will never do a four day fast again. I don't care. Yeah. 48 hours, that seems to be a good spot for me, but other people do like 10 day, two week, 30 day fasts. Okay. Get yeah. after it then. You know? Your body kind of shifts into different gears. It like takes a bit and it's like, what are you doing? This is crazy. Stop doing this. And like kind of fights back. Yeah. And then after a while, it's like, okay, brr, brr, and hard shift into what, whatever you're doing, whether that's right. going from running zero to like running a marathon a day or whatever, or, or, or I was a shocked way. at, and I think a lot of people out there have this. And I wonder if it's like a, a female, like perimenopausal thing. I was shocked every time I do a fast, I'm always shocked at how high, and, and keep in mind, I've been in dietary ketosis most of the time for like eight years. Yeah. I am shocked still at how high my fasting blood sugar is. Yeah. And I'm like, this is crazy. And, and again, it's not until fasting becomes like a big thing in our society that people then speak up, hey, why is my fasting blood sugar so high? Mm -hmm. And then other people say, so it's, you know what I mean? People don't take a look at it until we all start to try these things and it comes out. And then, you know, you do look to people like Jason Fung and Peter Atia, yeah. like what is going on? And are you doing, are you testing women who are 45 years old? Because it's a much different reaction than Absolutely. men who are 28 years old or Yada yada yada, or men who are forty-five years old. It's just just different things. So it, it it is a it's always a constant like, oh, you're learning something new about yourself. Yeah, it you know you talking about the hunger pangs also made me think that it's a novel feeling for a lot of people, right? If you're fasting and you haven't, especially an extended fast, and you haven't done yep. that since maybe you were a kid or yep, since you had a stomach bug or or whatever, it's you haven't felt this feeling for a very long time and it's going to feel weird and it's going it to feel weird. like, is this bad? Am I hungry? And it's like, you have a little water and you're like, Oh no, I'm cool. <laughs> you, we have access to so much food. We are so mm -hmm. abundant in food that it, the moment I feel a pang, I run over to the fridge and almonds, right. or, ugh, whatever. And so it's such a strange thing to be like, Oh God, am I going to die? <laughs> He's like, no, you're not going to die. Yeah. It's okay. You can, yeah. you can just go to bed without dinner that night because you kind of missed the window. It's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. You're not going to turn anorexic again. You're not going to die of malnutrition. You're going to be just fine. Yeah. You'll survive. So, so I kind of like the how, in a way, by doing that intense, focused activity of fasting, it's kind of lightened up things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and also you, you learn that it, it can be advantageous to kind of like hook into that that fasting energy sometimes we we've had a rough year with a lot of stuff that's happened and a few I was going to say who have, have you died. done a lot of fasting oh i'm sorry no oh, it's okay but i was going to um, say for your medical stuff have you done fasting to help yeah treat it? lots of fasting um yeah. but also so fasting as uh, we were recovering and just for people who haven't heard uh, about 6 months ago Allison and I my wife were at a rental and there was a gas leak multiple gas leaks actually and we were poisoned by carbon monoxide and uh Really, really rough. But coming back from that. It's insane. We just, uh, yeah, I, I fast. I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat. I was too sick for many days. So did a few fasts. Or and that from, helped. Say, from I, like I don't nausea, think like you couldn't keep stuff down? Right. or I was nausea. I'm still, the nausea just kind of comes and goes sometimes, honestly. Um, I bet. And. You should put the thing, that article that you wrote about it. Yeah. Is amazing. About the oh, whole experience. You. It just blew me away. Like. <laughs> and here you are it's something yeah we're back and you I haven't think thrown up more... yet this whole time we've been talking i'm proud of you thank you thank you so <laughs> much um but this is i mean this is what we want to do this is why we're right. here actually when i was sick one of the most frustrating things was not being able to work <laughs> you know not being able to be yeah. in touch with people like work you in our community yeah. and, and all that but anyway I, I, what i was saying was um during times of grief or just rough stuff happening in your own life or really high stress, sometimes you don't want 
to eat, or at least I don't. Um, yes. Like if if I'm just clobbered with really bad news late in the day, and normally I I eat my meal or or meals later in the day. Mm-hmm. But if I'm just clobbered with something really rough or I'm really stressed out, I kind of don't want to eat. And yeah. going to bed with just a little snack instead of dinner, or sometimes not even anything, feels really good the next day. It I does. Feel terrible that night. I just feel awful, but I don't yeah. want to eat anyway. And then by the next day, it's like, oh, I, I feel refreshed. My body was able to, to kind of, I think, rest from food for a while. And yeah. when you're able to do that and you get out of your body's own way, um, it's amazing what it can do can, to come back from almost anything. It's, it's incredible. I will say my inflammation markers, which by the way, is always my, for me personally, my most red flag markers are for inflammation. I don't really have an issue with high, you know, A1C or any metabolic panels or luckily, but it's inflammation. It's the homocysteine. It's the CRP. Mm -hmm. Um, Is that right? C-reactive protein? Yeah. See, again, I get confused on the things. I have to look at those because dealing with the autoimmune, my immune system's always tamped up and we're trying to like tamp it down. And that was another, uh, doing the blood work at the end of a four day fast. I was like, oh wow, you really do give your body a break. And if you're not putting anything in, you can just kind of start to heal. And that being said, I never want to do a four day fast. again. (laughs) Yeah. Well, everyone has that different line. I feel okay doing like three days after that. I'm kind of like ready. Day four was pretty brutal. That's why I was like, I I wound up, I wound up having a cup of chicken broth like four hours before I was supposed to break it. And I was like, you know what? We're done. We're, let's, yeah. take, let's take the wheels off. Cause that's important. <laughs> that's over. really important though. Right. Yeah. I think for people who are listening, it's definitely not a more is better type thing. It's not this all American. No. We're going to fast more than yeah. you and be better. Well, I no, think it's, that's where the disorder comes in. Right. Is, and listen, if I got a really crappy diagnosis or if I had an experience like you did, that would be the first thing I would do is explore fasting. If it was like a, a, you know, a cancer diagnosis and having to do uh, any special medical treatments, I would 100% say, okay, let's deal ourselves for, we're going to do, we're going to actually do have to do some extended fasting to help, help heal this. And who knows, maybe one day in my future, I might have to deal with that, but knock on wood, you know, you don't, we don't know. We don't know what's down the road for us and what we're going to experience. But I'm glad that I have had this experience to come, bring it back to traveling. Yeah. You might find yourself not eating for 10, 12 hours because you're flying somewhere and the food is garbage or it all has gluten. In my case, I can't have that or, you know what I mean? And then you're like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm glad I had that touch point of being able to do this. So I'm not like, oh my gosh, I'm starving. Or I always bring almonds with me on the plane. And now very often there's somebody with a nut allergy on the plane and you can't mm-hmm. open a bag of nuts on the plane. You'll make right. them sick. And so you're like, okay, well, that takes care of that. Yeah. We're not opening the almonds. Well, it does. And when you think about it, like the size of us as humans and like how much time is actually passing and the amount of almonds you would have otherwise eaten, you realize that like fasting isn't that much different no. than eating a meal. You know what right. I mean? It's like in the grand scheme of things is what I mean. Right. Some days you really want to eat more. Some days you want to eat less. Yeah. And, and just your lifestyle around you sometimes. I would say what's interesting is about like the cooks and the people who are used to eating and cooking at home like us, like you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we probably have the highest standards and in a lot of, when we're eating out, especially and, and or traveling. And so it makes it easier to fast because you've been yeah. burned, right? Like, haven't you? It's like, oh, I'm so hungry. I'm just going to break my fast with this and get something. And, it's like, and then you get sick and you're like, oh, not worth it. why did I do that? I know. Listen, I've had a why did I do that moment. It's like <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And, and by the way, that's part of like the learning process and figuring out what your boundaries are. Mm-hmm. Um, because most of us have been told by the diet industry what our boundaries should be. And we try to live up to this ideal and it doesn't work. But you have to learn what your own boundaries are. Yeah. And that's also part of the process. And, and they uh, move. And they move. They, they do move. move. Sometimes, sometimes they, you know, if I order the burger, no bun, and then, uh, you know, no cheese, add the avocado, add the bacon, add the mushrooms, add the onions. That's what I, that's the go-to yeah. if, if they, if any American restaurant will generally be able to provide yeah. that. Um, and uh, no matter what part of the country you're in, peace, that you can find that particular thing. So that's always my go-to. And my husband's always like, you eat so many burgers. I was like, I know. Good thing I love burgers. Um, but if they happen to leave the French fries on the plate, sometimes yeah. I can resist those French fries and it's not a problem. Other times I'm like, ah, I just want to eat those fries. And then you're yeah. like, 
can't do that. <laughs> the oil and the things, you know, and that well, also man. too, the oil they use at restaurants is garbage and it's pretty yeah. tough when you have a sensitive stomach and you oh, know yeah. that that oil will set it off. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just better to be like, nah. I, honestly, it's better if I just have a vodka soda and don't eat anything. It's better if I have alcohol in my stomach <laughs> than the oil. That's a scary thing. Not all the time. Obviously, I'm exaggerating. Good God. They're like, girl, you need help. <laughs> <laughs> now the comedian is talking, I guess. Yeah. But let's talk about that because I think one, th okay. one thing that's happened recently is words have become even squishier than usual yeah. and and well, especially the carnivores came after you because you called it kitty food and they were they felt mad at you <laughs> they were mad at me they felt but mad. now we're friends we're friends i don't know maybe i ticked them off again but i don't <laughs> think so. they seem like solid people who for, for the most part i, I do want to say most people who are able to dedicate themselves and really get passionate about something like that yeah are the ones who are doing it right for the most part true. you know that's true yeah that's so i true. think that's worth saying but language um, language. It's getting trickier and trickier, and it and is. so is comedy. It's harder to say things. We're not allowed to talk about certain things. Well, how do you handle that? My husband and I. Uh, he's also a comic, and a, a, about two years ago, when our daughter went off to college, we had a unique opportunity and idea that we were like here as a, as a female comic. One of my pet peeves is watching dudes go on stage and talk about uh, being married and being, you know, a father. And it, not that they're not allowed to, of course, they're allowed to talk about it. It's yeah. great. But I, I'm always want to know, like, what's her perspective? Uh -huh. what you hear from her. Like, what does yeah. she have to say about him being, you know, that way or her, you know, is she really crazy or be women be shopping? Like, I hate that kind of a joke. You know what I mean? Sure. So I, uh, and, and comedy is a very male dominated field still yeah. to this day. So I, um, my husband and I kind of thought, thought, what if we could get up and do a, he said, she said sort of thing. Cause we've been married 20 years now and we started writing jokes and we actually in the process of writing jokes healed a lot of crap that we had never discussed. We had sure. never discussed. We don't talk about our wedding because it was a shotgun wedding. We don't have any pictures up, up of our wedding. And so then we started writing jokes about our wedding. And this is a true story. Um, we went to the Bahamas to have a shotgun wedding. And we, by the way, we had like $50,000 of credit card debt. So what's the smart thing to do? Go to the Bahamas, run up your credit cards more and have a destination wedding that everyone will roll their eyes at because we shouldn't be getting married anyway because we're pregnant and we have only been dating six months. Okay. So like, like literally it was like one dumb decision after another. Sure. And so we are at this beach in the Bahamas for three days. And at the end of the third day, it was a culminate in the blessed event. And Gloria Steinem, was laying out next to us on the beach all three days. And, uh, and my husband was like, oh, if only there was a sign that we shouldn't get married. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> hello. And for those youngins out there who don't know who Gloria Steinem is, she's like the most iconic woman of the feminist of the 20th century moving feminism forward. Yeah. And um, so I actually went up to talk to Gloria Steinem as a, as a, 25 year old, knocked up, wide eyed, innocent. Yeah. And I told her, I was like, you know what, Gloria, can I bend your ear for a second? I'm here. I'm in the Bahamas. I am pregnant. I am throwing up every day. I feel, which is a whole other thing. I didn't realize, I didn't realize I had autoimmune and I threw up every day till I was six and a half months pregnant. That's another oh thing. Gosh. So I was like, I'm miserable. We're getting married because we're Italian and that's what you do when you get yeah. pregnant. And, uh, <laughs> and we didn't have a lot of like touch points. And, and I go, it's, it, what should I do? Is, is this right? And she goes, eh, get married. Gloria Steinem. Wow. She said, get married. And I was like, That's well, okay. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so basically, long story short, we started writing jokes about every aspect of it. Like what it's like to raise kids, what it's like to be with each other, what it's like to, what money is like, what sex is like, what it's like if you're going to make a long-term relationship work. And by the way, it's not just for people who actually get married. Who cares? It, if anybody who's ever been in a long-term relationship, it's fun to get up there. I People identify like, oh, I'm more like her or I'm more like him. And, uh, and we talk about the truth in our relationship. And that's how I believe that we're able to get away with some of the stuff that, that we get away with. 
Yeah. Because to bring it back to the language thing, I'm quite loquacious in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> sure. <laughs> to bring it back to the language thing, you don't, I, you know, I, obviously nobody wants to say anything to offend people, but ours is a much more interior relationship inside the home type of comedy. We're not commenting on political stuff. We're not, mm -hmm. the, the most political we get is actually what's happening at home, which is, you know, it's 2000. We have a joke about how like he takes care of the cars for me. Like my man takes care of the car. Like, I don't know anything about how to take care. It's so sexy. And then he says, well, nothing sexier than a man paying another man to fix his wife's car. <laughs> and then I, I basically say like, and the thing that I do for him in the household is everything else. It's 2020. I do all the other things, you know, so that's his, you know, the politically, the political stuff that we get to is that, you know, pointing out that there's still, we're a very modern couple. He's very, he's very hands-on as a dad. He actually changed diapers and knew when it was time to give her a bath and stuff like that. And like, yeah. he was a responsible participatory father and I still did everything in the house. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I that's a so. very political thing to say, like, why are we still doing this? Yeah. Why is the labor distribution of labor still so uneven? So that's that's more where where we get to. But we certain certainly wouldn't be like eh, Trump, Elizabeth Warren, caucuses. Like we're, <laughs> what are, who cares? I mean, like, for our comedy, a, who cares? I, a, I think that's really important, even for like the non comics uh, comics out there who are just regular people to open up your relationships to be able to joke back and forth about things that might be off or or just look weird because equal is also a squishy word and that's not always what we're after is equal um we all need to kind of respect each other in our own ways mm -hmm. but uh that's tricky but you need to be able to talk about it so maybe that's the answer is, is not necessarily well, we all get behind the microphone and say whatever we want but at yeah. least with our closest relationships we can we can feel like we can examine the things that might be off to us. Right. And and that's what, and listen, that's why comedy is so healing mm -hmm. is because we're all going through this pain of, of whatever your experience is. And then when you see a comic on stage that you resonate with, it feels so good to be like, oh my God, that's me. I can laugh at these foibles. I can laugh at these negative beliefs I've been carrying around. I can release that and, and lighten up. There's, there's, in that's why I love comedy the most because you're in a room and it's literally alchemy of yeah. it, you know, when you're all kind of in it together. And also too, we do a lot of crowd work. We do a lot of Q and A's with people. We want to find, you know, these newlyweds over here. And then these people have been married for 40 years over there. I love talking to people and seeing where they are. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's really so fun. fun. I can't believe, well, we're almost out of time, but oh, before we go, crap. I want to oh, make yeah. sure we mentioned, oh, yeah. so Allison is oh, yeah. the best. She made like eight or nine of your recipes. <gasps> She and did. We. That I'm makes just, me so happy. I'm scrolling down because I can't remember all the titles. We tried so many and they're awesome. Uh, and I just want to say before I love that I, you wrote it up. You're like, on. "What did you make, babe?" Okay. I have to type so it up. Jal jalapeno poppers. <laughs> oh yeah. The yeah. spinach and mushroom tartlets were amazing. <gasps> I, plowed I love those. those. They're labor intensive. They're really good but cold. Good. Really good hot too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, dark chocolate like almond cold cold butter balls. Yes. A little bit. Those are a nice little dessert. Where you don't really, you know, you're not really breaking the bank on that one, you know? Yeah, that's totally. Like, like after dinner, you have one or two of those mm -hmm. and you're like, all right, cool. That's, that's yeah. I don't feel like I need to have a whole bunch. I and like also that. it has the word balls in the title. That's right. You're Hilarious. winning. Rosemary pecans. That one snuck oh. up on me. I didn't notice it was rosemary. White. I'm like, what is this? It tastes so, so good. good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we made a couple of the instant pot things as well oh, and we're going to be making a few more so i'll, I'll great check i love it but oh my god that makes me so happy i want to say though that for uh especially dairy free is hard yes. to pull off you have to know really really dial in what you're doing and know exactly yes. how to make it taste good because cheese is an easy win for almost anything you just cheese top makes it everything makes better and then when you can't have it that's what you know i definitely went through a temper tantrum when i was told by several doctors after several blood tests you cannot tolerate dairy <clears throat> it's inciting the autoimmune response within you and uh so this second book has much more dairy free options because obviously things are going to reflect where i am in my eating journey however most of my audience eats dairy so th that's why they're still dairy i don't claim well, it you can always dairy. throw it over the top that's the good part you can so allison you goes want to. dairy free yes. and i just throw the cheese on top put the parmesan on it <laughs> yeah I, I think that it's important to like i have a lot of ideas for dairy substitutes listed in the book but i also do videos that's probably the number one question i'm asked because i think a lot of people are coming to the conclusion that they can't have dairy and i'm like i get it yeah. 
Yeah. Here's what I like. Luckily, there's more products now at Whole Foods, but a lot of them are just overpriced and, and disgusting. And some right. of them are okay. And some of them, you, I just figure out how to make things that inherently don't have dairy in them. Yeah. Oh, one thing I want to make sure we talk about is like, yes. okay, so I, I like this cookbook. Mm -hmm. I don't like most cookbooks. I really don't. Thank you. I get hundreds of cookbooks. We've changed our address like a half dozen times. We still get so many cookbooks. Oh. They're all keto. They have like a photo yeah. brushed, perfect Insta face on the yeah, front yeah, yeah. and yeah. all the recipes are the same. Yeah. All the recipes have the same artificial sweeteners in them. They all <laughs> the same ingredients. They all look the same. They're all pretty yeah. and I'm so sick of it. Oh. Your recipes and your books have your personality and cultural heritage yes. in it. And I just, yes. I love how real that is. I wish it weren't so rare, but you're the real deal. And I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to cry. Yeah. I'm going to cry. No, that's so nice. And thank you. That That is a, the highest compliment because obviously I put my heart and soul into this. And because I was told before the fir first book that it would never be successful by many people in publishing because I'm not, like somebody said, like, you should pair up with a celebrity chef. I was like, why would a celebrity chef pair up with me. Like they right. would just do their own book. Anyway, yeah. I was told such crazy <laughs> things, but what it did to me was make sure my quality control was on point. Right. So I, I test these recipes. I have friends test them. I make sure everything's great. I, I, you know, I've got, I feel like I got much better with my food photography in the second one and that's always evolving and very fun to do. And I, you know, now I've like sunk some money into some cool lenses and yeah. I've had a good, I've had a good time with it, but it is all 100% me. This is me. So if there's anything you don't like about it, it's it's my fault. It's on me. I take full responsibility. And no, I, I will it. not put carb grams in the book. Sorry. <laughs> Don't do it. We're not doing it. I'm not it doing either. it. We're not doing it either. Anyway, yeah. Anna, Thank please you. tell folks where they can find your book and you and what you're working on. Eat Happy 2 is available at all online book sellers like Amazon and Barnes and Noble or IndieBound.org is a great place to find a local independent bookstore near you and you can order it that way. Uh, I'm at anavicino.com. I have a ton of free recipes there. You can also sign up and get a free recipe sampler. So in case you want to try some things before you want to sink money into the books. Uh, <clears throat> Instagram is my favorite of the socials. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a very active Facebook group, Anna Vicino's Eat Happy Facebook group. But Instagram is my favorite because then I can just kind of show you guys what I'm doing, what I'm making for dinner, what I'm doing with my life there. I, I have more fun. I like the stories. I'm a fan of the stories. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Stories that. are fun. I feel like all comics should be on the stories because that's a great way to just have like short little funny bits of nice. your life. I yeah. got to get on there. I've, I've been Get on there. How <laughs> You're on Instagram. Yeah, but uh, not really. Kind yeah. of. Not really. <laughs> we'll are you, see. Are you I'm going to <laughs> um, Anyway, all of you listening right. out there, Eat Happy Too is the name of this cookbook. I really enjoy it. Uh, we don't say that about many cookbooks. So go out That's there really and check nice out Anna's you. work. Thank Anna, you. you're the best. Thank you so much. You're the on. best. Thank <laughs> you for having me. This episode is brought to you by listeners like you and Future Greens. You want my number one health tip right now? Get your greens in every single day. I've been getting my greens on every day for coming up on, well, almost every day, let's be honest, for coming up on almost 10 years now, and I believe it makes a monumental difference to my health, performance, and overall well-being. Why? Well, most of us eat too many acidic foods like meat, dairy, or sugar and other junk carbs, leading to an unbalanced pH level in the body and more than our fair share of toxins. I don't know if you've ever tried greens supplements, but most of them taste terrible, like fish tank. And if it doesn't taste good, I won't drink it, no matter how good it is for me, especially if you're talking every day. There are tons of supplements out there packed with cheap fats, sugar, fillers, and caffeine, but we have a much better option if you're looking to increase your energy and your health. So when Allison and I are on the road, we always take Future Greens. Future Greens is a concentrated superfood powder made from 15 organic fruits and vegetables, plus six additional superfoods, as well as digestive enzymes. So in less than 60 seconds, you can get the nutrition of over 20 fruits, veggies, and adaptogens, all with less than one gram of sugar. Future Greens is packed with vitamins, minerals, and filling prebiotic fiber from whole, organic veggies, sprouts, algaes, and berries, including kale, beet, 
parsley, collard greens, cauliflower sprouts, broccoli sprouts, spirulina, chlorella, blueberries, raspberries, and much more. Imagine the time and expense it would take you to buy and prepare all those foods separately. Trust us, we've tried, and Future Greens makes it a heck of a lot easier. Our ingredients are harvested at peak freshness and potency and immediately concentrated and dried using cool temperature processes that preserve the energetic and nutritional integrity of all the ingredients. Whether you're looking to strengthen your immunity, cleanse your system of toxins, alkalize your body, diversify your diet, or boost your energy without caffeine, Future Greens is your new best friend. And as a listener of Fat Burning Man, you can get a 20% discount to try Future Greens yourself. So to get Future Greens from Wild Superfoods and your special Fat Burning Man deal, just visit fatburningman.com forward slash greens to get 20% off when you subscribe and save. On top of that, you'll get an extra bonus that I can't even tell you about right now, but just visit fatburningman.com forward slash greens. We'll see you there. Well, hey there, listener. This is Abel one more time, and I just want to say thank you for listening to this episode of the Fat Burning Man Show. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button wherever you might be listening to or watching this show right now. And if you have a second, please leave me a quick review for the Fat Burning Man Show. I read every single one of them, and every time you leave a review, it gives us a little boost in the rankings, and that helps other people find this show. And if you can think of someone else who might enjoy and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or a family member. And if they're like, what is this fat burning man thing? That's a really silly name. You could be like, you're right, but here's the deal. We've recorded over 250 episodes of the Fat Burning Man Show with thought leaders in health from all over the world. And so far, we've won four awards, hitting number one in health in more than eight countries internationally. We have more than 30 million downloads already, but we're just getting started. I can't believe any of this, by the way, and, and couldn't do any of this without you. So thanks once again. But here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode of the Fat Burning Man Show for free with zero outside advertisements, no outside sponsors, and no corporate overlords. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com. We'll give you a, a second here just to type it in, fatburningman.com. And you'll get all the show notes, transcripts, and video and audio versions for all the past episodes of the Fat Burning Man Show for free. Better yet, Enter your email at fatburningman.com, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll even send you a quick start guide so you can take your health into your own hands right now, along with a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up. Once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free goodies with a bonus surprise straight to your inbox. This is Abel James signing off. Thank you so much for listening once again and have a great week.